Over the last six weeks, I've taken on the Zwift Academy for the first time, along with thousands and thousands of other people around the world. An initial baseline fitness test to assess my initial form, or lack of, was then followed by three sessions focused on raising my VO2 max, three sessions focused on raising my FTP, interspersed with two recovery rides, all with the aim of getting fitter and faster. And ultimately, to answer the question that's on everybody's lips, can I get back to the pro peloton? No way, impossible. Bloody mate, are you serious? At your age? Mate, you were lucky to turn pro in the first place. Ma no, Dan. Cioè, non esiste. Non ce la puoi fare. Well, that was a resounding no. Thanks for the vote of confidence, guys. They haven't even seen my finish line test results yet. And neither have I, because I'm about to do it. But before we get on to that, I'm going to remind you of where I started back in September. The baseline test consisted of three timed segments, a short climb, a flat sprint, and a longer climb to finish. And these were the results from the baseline test. Titans Grove, 1 minute 46 at 410 watts. The sprint forward was 25 seconds at an average power of 641 watts. And the Volcano KOM, 9 minutes and 47 at 233 watts. I died a thousand deaths on that final effort in a classic case of overestimating my own strength. But with the knowledge and hopefully fitness gained from what I've done since, I should be able to pace that better today. So what have I been doing since then? Well, the first three hard sessions were all focused on increasing my VO2 max, basically raising the ceiling so that everything below that has room for improvement. And I have to say, that those sessions are very well designed. I did them all with an FTP setting of 230 watts, and with all three, for the first half, I was thinking, I could push this up, increase my FTP bias, but by the end, I was only just about hitting the numbers. All of those three sessions involve short, sharp, repeated efforts. The problem I had with those first sessions was that general life got in the way. With my focus now on racing coverage, it was an incredibly busy time of year work-wise, and I also travelled abroad with work for the first time since the pandemic struck. Which is great, I love my job, but it did mean I was only getting one session done every week. Not ideal if you really want to see improvements. So I came up with a plan for the final sessions. Get them all done in a short period of time so as to overload my system, and then taper down to this final test. A bit like cramming for your exams, with the work freshest in your mind, or in my case, freshest in my legs. The second block of three sessions all focused on FTP, so functional threshold power, what I'm able to sustain for around about 20 minutes plus. And they seem to be working because for the final session, I raised my FTP on the Zwift Companion app from 230 watts to 240 watts, and I managed to hit all the numbers. I still felt sick, it still hurt a lot, but I hit them nonetheless. So the signs of improvement are there. And to make doubly sure that I've improved, I've resorted to an old trick. That's right, for the first time in years, I've shaved my legs so that they look more um, cut. The idea being that when I do my test shortly, when I look down and see two baguette legs that vaguely resemble those of a cyclist, I get a few extra watts. And all for the price of just three razor blades to cut through the undergrowth and a tiny loss of blood. So, it's time to find out where I'm at now with my power and fitness. Without further ado, let's smash the finish line ride. So in one kilometre now, the end of this warm-up, I'll have the first time segment, which is Titans Grove Reverse KOM, 900 metres long, 6.8% average gradient. Then, 11 kilometres fairly easy, and then it's the Watopia Sprint Forward, so 360 metres on a flat road, flat out. And then four kilometers where I'll take things very, very easy. And then finally, it's the Volcano KOM. 3.75 kilometers at 3.2%. And I will hope not to die a thousand deaths like I did on the first baseline test. Time will tell. But I need to start the first one, it's coming up now. just as hard as the first time. So a 176 heart rate then. Oh, 
Oh, there it is. I think my time's faster. <laughs> there's not enough brain, see? There's not enough blood going to my brain to remember what my previous time was. Now that was hard, but one of the key differences I'm hoping for between this test and the baseline one is that I recover better. So part of fitness is the ability to produce more power for a certain duration. And part of fitness is about the ability to recover between hard efforts. And I think that's what I really suffered on the first time. And I'm just hoping I won't pay for each effort on the final one as much today as I did the first time around. Final segment, 3.75 Ks, 3.2%. I'm up for this. Feel better recovered. Right, mate, what are you doing? On the final segment of my finish line test. Cool. Doing your warm up, yeah? No, I'm on the final segment. Bastard. All right. Well, you got big calf muscles on there. Do you want a cup of tea? Not, not right now. Yeah. Do you want a beer? No. <laughs> First time for everything. I have been crunching the numbers. I've uploaded the ride to Strava so I can get the average power for each segment as well, and the results are in. So, when I first did the baseline test at the start of September, for the first segment, Titans Grow Reverse, it took me a minute and 46 at 410 watt average power. Today, one minute and 41 seconds for an average power at 445 watts. So that is a 5% improvement in the duration and an 8.5% improvement in the average power for the duration it took. For the sprint forward, bearing in mind that we haven't done any specific sprint training over the course of the Zwift Academy, last time 25 seconds, 641 watts. This time, 24 seconds at 744 watts. So just a second improvement. That's a 4% improvement in duration, but a 16% improvement in the average power. And finally, the longest segment, so the Volcano KOM, last time, 9 minutes and 47 at 233 watts, where I completely died, just to mention that again. This time, 8 minutes and 13 seconds at 284 watts. So a 19% improvement in the duration and a 22% improvement in the average power. Obviously, I'm very pleased with those numbers, but I'm slightly worried there are a few of you out there who aren't going to believe the improvements. So, I've also gone back and looked at the average heart rates for each of those segments. Now, I haven't got one for the Titans Grow Reverse for the first time because I had a heart rate dropout back in the start of September. But for the sprint forward, 
Last time, 165 average heart rate, this time 159, so significantly lower. But it was slightly higher this time for the Volcano KOM. 162 beats per minute average the first time I did this, 164 average today. Now, the other thing that I really need to drum home to everyone is that when I say I've been doing hardly any riding or any fitness activity at all over the last year or two, I haven't been lying. I'm not doing any riding at all outside of going out of Jude every so often on the mountain bike. So I guess at the start of September, I really was at rock bottom when it came to my fitness. And because I've done a lot of riding in the past, there's a muscle memory there. Of course, I'm going to make improvements really quickly, especially by cramming a lot of sessions in in one go and then having a few days rest before I did the final test a day. So I think if I carried on with this, the improvements would still be there, but of course they would plateau and I might start getting frustrated that I'm not getting better at the same rate I was at the start. But these numbers are certainly gonna motivate me. Right, let me go and have a shower and I'll get back to you shortly. Now, a number of you have written to me with your own results and they are quite varied from those who made huge gains to some who made no gains at all. But that's because everybody is different. Everybody's in a different situation. So if you've been training really hard for months or even years leading up to the Zwift Academy, you're unlikely to have seen huge gains. On the other hand though, if, like me, you came from doing very little riding, you're going to make significant gains, particularly if you've got a history of riding a lot and have just taken a break from the bike for whatever reason. I also have to say, that I really enjoyed the journey, as much as I hate saying that word. So the workouts on Zwift make it really easy to get the sessions done. You just sit on your bike, you're given very clear instructions on the screen as to what the workout involves, and then if you're lucky enough to own a smart trainer, that will adjust the resistance accordingly, and that means that all you need to do is concentrate on pedaling your bike at your preferred cadence. It doesn't make it any less painful for your legs, but it does remove any brain power that you might need in order to remember what intervals you need to do at what power and when. And my son, incidentally, Jude, has got back on Zwift and now is constantly asking me if he can go on it himself. He loves riding outside and now he loves riding inside too. And I would say that's much better than spending hours on end on Fortnite. And you know what? I am personally considering continuing the Zwift workouts over the British winter that we are about to enter. I am lucky enough to have a permanent home training set up so I can just jump on, do a session, have a shower, and then continue on with my day. And who knows, I might yet return to the Pro Peloton. You're kidding me, right? Thank you, I think you've made your point clear now. So I will not be returning to the Pro Peloton, as we all know, but two riders will be starting out in the Pro Peloton next year through their success at the Zwift Academy. So the finals this year are in early winter, and the finalists will be put through their paces before the winner of the men's and women's category is finally decided. Those winners will then get a place on Canyon SRAM and Alpes in Phoenix, and we'll be able to watch them compete in races next year that we will hopefully have live over on GCN+. And... I am delighted to say that we are going to be in Mallorca for those finals, bringing you all a series of episodes where you can see the final selection process and ultimately see the winners crowned. Just before I finish though, I would love to know how you got on if you've just completed the Zwift Academy. Uh, let us know about your results and your overall experiences in the comments section down below. Thank you all for watching. See you soon.